Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to our daily devotion. It is Wednesday, January 20th. As always, I thank those of you that are so loyal to these devotions, especially thank those of you that share them uh, so we get the gospel out there to more and more people. Um, morning, Serena. We're in the Lord's Prayer uh, where, where Jesus teaches us how to pray. And we've already, morning, Marcy, and we've already looked at our Father in Heaven, our Abba, our Daddy. Hallowed be your name, where it's holy, holy, holy to be revered, even though he's our daddy, we're still to respect and revere him mightily. Your kingdom come, uh, his kingdom has come down into earth. God entered earth to show us what heaven is like. Uh, your will be done. Uh, it's his will, not our will. And when we pray, we need to pray according to his will. And now we come to uh, give us this day our daily bread. Now, what does that mean? Give us this day our daily bread. Notice that first I want you to notice this. Good morning, Marcy. Good morning, Gloria. Uh, notice that Jesus teaches us to acknowledge God before we ever ask him for anything. I mean, look at everything we just talked about now before we ask now for something for ourselves. Uh, we don't just start out right away asking for ourselves. We start out acknowledging who God is, how big God is, how mighty he is. Then we ask. Uh, <clears throat> yesterday, last night, with our impact video, we talked about how God knew, knew you before you were born. Had plans for you before you were born. Even knew you before he created the world. Knew who you were going to be and what you were going to do before he even created the world. For those of you that have children or grandchildren, aren't married yet, God already knows their children. Already knows their children, already knows, has plans for them. What a mighty God. So we acknowledge this God first before we ask for anything. Um, so, um, what, what it was... It says here in, in Matthew 6, 8, just prior to this, it says, um, For your Father knows what you need before you even ask Him. He still wants you to ask Him. It's like your child getting ready to ask you for something. Most times you already know what they're, what they're going to ask you for. You already know what they want before they even ask you. Well, that God knows everything. He knows everything before you even ask Him. He knows what, you, what you're going to ask. He knows what you need. Good morning, Liz. Good morning, Paul. Morning, John. Um, so Jesus teaches us just to ask for our daily bread or our daily substance. You know, just give us today our daily bread. And, and, and daily. Notice daily. doesn't say give us, give us our bread for the rest of our lives. J just worry about today. God says, There's, you have enough things to worry about just for today. Don't, don't worry about tomorrow. Just be concerned about today. So he said, just give us what we need today. And in Proverbs 30, verse 8, it says this. It says, give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Don't, I don't want poverty, but I don't want riches either. I just want, I, I just want daily substance is what he's saying. And then in 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 10 he warns us about this. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. When you see God and you're, and, you, and you're wanting to become more like God and you're content with where you're at, with what you have, that's great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. God knows what you want. God knows what you need. Remember what we talked about according to his will? <clears throat> you can ask God for things. He, he listens to you. He answers you. But it's always according to his will. It, so God knows exactly what we need, and it's different for everybody. It's different. Granted, some people have much more than others, but God just wants us to be content with what God has given us. And if God has given you much, if you have much, then God expects more from you. It says, those who are given more, more is expected from them. 
So if God is giving you more than what you need, then God says to be generous and willing to share with others. So nothing worse. There's nothing worse that I see among Christians when they, when, when they don't have much and they're, and they're looking ahead, wanting more, wanting more, wanting more. It's like this, this lottery, these two lotteries, I guess, that are supposedly getting close to a billion dollars. It's something like 800 and some million. And everybody's playing them. Everybody's wanting to win. Everybody's wanting that $800 million. Like you really need $800 million. God is saying, be content with what you have. Be content with it. If, if you have daily substance, be content with it. If you have more, then be willing to share. He tells us here, and later we'll cover it later on, but let me read it right now to you. It says this, in, verse, in verse, Matthew in verse 31, it says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the unbelievers, the pagans, run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and then all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Because <laughs> you have enough things to think about today. You have enough things to worry about today. Don't be concerned about tomorrow now. Boy, don't we all do that, though? We all do that. We're all concerned about next tomorrow, the next week, the next month, the next year. And God is telling us, the God that created us and knows us best tells us, don't be doing that. Don't be doing it. You've got enough things to be thinking about today. Just think about today. And, and, and trust me, if you just think about today and don't dwell about tomorrow, today goes better. But when you dwell on tomorrow and you're worried and you're stressed out and you've got anxiety, what good does that do you? doesn't do any good at all. In, in my prayer time, <clears throat> I was thinking about what would happen if my son could no longer support me financially because he'd been doing that now for 11 years uh, because his business has been successful and now all of a sudden it's just really, really struggling. And so I was, I was in my prayer time, I was thinking, I don't know, what would happen now if all of a sudden I didn't? And God assured me, God just assured me that God said, I'll take care of you. You'll be taken care of. What does it say? If, if he takes care of the birds in the air and if he if he makes flowers beautiful, it's kind of like, are not we as humans more important than birds and flowers? He takes care of them. He said, no, I may not have all that I currently have, but I won't starve. I won't go homeless. I may not be able to go out to, to eat out just at all. I may not be able to go to, to spend money on or whatever, it's not like I do anyway, but going, maybe even golfing, I, I don't know if I'll even be able to golf, I don't know that I'd be able to do that, because that can be expensive, uh, but it's not like I'm going to starve, it's not like I'm going to be out on the streets, so I would just have to learn to be content with my daily bread, with my daily substance. Now, I've learned this, you, you know, you know all that, you know this, I, I don't have to tell you, but you see, you know, movie stars, rock stars, athletes that are wealthy, that are extremely wealthy. Uh, are they ever satisfied? They're always wanting more. They're always wanting to stay popular. They're, they're so afraid of growing old gracefully. They have everything that we dream of having, and yet I don't see them content. I don't see them that content. I can remember when I was in the police force and they were, they were having troubles. There was a lot of stuff going on in, in the local bars and, and nightclubs. And so every shift we had to visit two different in our district that we had for that night, we had to visit two, two of them just to show our presence in there. And I remember when I'd get a, a shift on the, uh, on the uh, west side where it was just all beer bars and working class people, guys coming in, <clears throat> women coming in with their night, with their lunch pails. And then you'd walk in there and they're all laughing and having a great time. And they see me walking in and oh, let me buy you a drink. And it's like, well, no, no, can't drink on shift. And then I'd go into the cocktail bars on the, on the west side where it was, where it was, where the wealthy lived. And you'd walk in there and people are sipping their martinis and 
no smiles on their faces, no laughter. And I remember thinking, and I didn't even know the Lord yet. And I remember thinking to myself, God, this is an oxymoron. This should be the opposite. It should be the people that, uh, with their lunch pails that, don't, that aren't making much money, that don't have much, they should be the ones there with long faces. And the people that are wealthy, that are drinking martini, they should be the one with laughter. And it was the opposite. It was the very opposite. So it, it showed me even back then, before I was even seeking the Lord, it showed me back then that money doesn't necessarily make you happy. Now, what, remember what we wrote in... What we read in Proverbs, give me neither poverty nor wealth. Just give me my daily substance. And, and, and Jesus knew that. Jesus was God and he knew that. So when he taught us to pray, he said, just give us today our daily bread. Just give us our daily substance today. And we're not going to worry about tomorrow. Or, or try not to worry about tomorrow. Just be satisfied with what you had. So maybe some of you are going to have breakfast and, and you may only have cereal in your house. Some of you may make breakfast and maybe you have bacon and eggs in your house. Some of you may be wealthy enough where you can go out and get a, 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 a breakfast and don't even have to cook. But you're all going to be fed. You're all going to be fed. It's not like you don't know where your meal is going to come from. For everybody I see on this that are watching this right now, you all know where you're going to be fed. Good morning, Roz. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Barb. So Jesus knows that and says, My daddy in heaven, holy, holy, holy is your name to be revered. You have come down from heaven and brought heaven down here to earth so we know what heaven is all about. And your will is done in our lives. It's your will, everything according to your perfect will. And then just give us today what we need. Just our daily substance is all we ask for. That's how he teaches us to pray. I trust this. I hope this said something to you. Uh, I hope that you can say what I say when people say, how's it going, Jim? You all know what I say. Life doesn't get any better. When you seek first his kingdom, then he adds all those things to you. So seek first his kingdom. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Tonight is our, um, is our youth, Youth Alive, and I'm going to be singing a Justin Bieber song. Uh, let me just give you a little heads up. Uh, I was never a fan of his, even though I liked his voice, but he was always wild and crazy and immature. And now, supposedly, he's given his life to the Lord, and he, uh, he's attending Bible studies, and, uh, and, he, and he wrote and sang this song, Holy. Uh, it, it's headed for number one on the charts. Uh, good song. Anyway, I'll be singing that tonight. Uh, if this meant something to you, share this. Share this video. We got to get this. We got to get these messages out to more and more people. God bless you all. Have a great day. And I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Bye.